And we're your host for today, so I want to do a small commercial, it takes about a minute, just to uh, describe who we are. We're a local um, nonprofit organization, and we're dedicated towards building community in the communities that we serve and helping people as they age to stay in the homes that they love and the communities that they love. Now, we're not the Council on Aging. Some people confuse us with them, and we've had people even confuse us with the Chamber of Commerce, which we're not. We're just a local standalone organization. Um, we're a membership organization. People join us, and they pay dues, and we have volunteers who help the members with the needs that they might have. So uh, a service organization completely made up of volunteers. No one earns a penny. If you go to the website and just, you, know, you go to Google, type in Greater Newburyport Village, and you'll get a wonderful explanation of who we are. Could I have a show of hands for people in the audience who are a member of the village? Okay, there's quite a few of you here. So um, if you, you know, want to know more, just turn to one of those people since I just volunteered them to answer any questions that you might have. We help people in two ways. Number one, what we call good neighbor services. So we are experts at pairing up people who just need a little bit of help around their homes uh, with people who are volunteers who are willing to help. Now, some examples from the last few weeks, we've helped people with transportation needs. Hi, I need to go to the doctor, I need a ride. We've helped people with some errands. I need to get to the store, but I can't get there. Can you do this for me? Uh, we've helped people with their computers in the last couple of weeks. So we have technology volunteers who would help. Um, we've had uh, a lady who, uh, in her, uh, her 80s, whose uh, toilet paper holder fell off the wall. Now, I, uh, I sounds a little funny, but if that's happened to you, it's pretty aggravating. And how much do you think that would cost to call a handyman to come over and stick that toilet paper holder back on? So those are types of the services that we do, and there are many, many more. The other thing that we do is uh, combat social isolation, because that is, that is horrible for people, and often as we age, you know, people don't come out, they don't involve others, so we've had a variety of lunches or dinners that people can go to. We've had uh, oh, David Moon from the, from the Audubon did a wonderful walk over at Maudsley State Park looking for mushrooms. Uh, we had a tour of the Pingree School and their wonderful sculptures, so we continually try to get people Get out of your home and involve yourself in the community. So that's what we do. We try to build community, uh, serve the communities that we're in, and we would love to have you as a volunteer or as a member. Um, so look us up or ask somebody next to you, what is this village all about? Thank you very much. Joyce? Oh. Uh, my name is Joyce Shea. I'm also a member of the village. And thank you all for coming today. This is absolutely wonderful. And we also thank the Senior Center that we have this wonderful location where we can have, you know, these meetings. Um, if you have a cell phone, please make sure it's off. Okay. And if you're not sure about how to turn it off, find somebody near you who can help you. Okay. Um, a wonderful turnout. This is wonderful. I know, you know, we, we just love history, it seems, um, people in our age group, and younger people like history, too. But anyway, we're so glad that we have Glee Woodworth here today, and she's an a incredible local historian. She made herself into a historian, and uh, she is going to talk about Newburyport then and now, and show us wonderful pictures. Okay. All right, thank you everyone. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Got your thinking caps on? As always, for those of you who know, uh, in my presentations, I um, encourage any comments or questions as we go along. But I'll be also asking lots of questions too, all right? Okay, let's go. Name the three locations of the jails. Auburn Street, Federal Street, 
I was probably down in the down, downtown area. Yeah, yeah. All right, Auburn, uh, Green, uh, I'm sorry, Federal Street, and then to Auburn in 1825. Where is Grasshopper Plains? Tough one. Up on Story Ave, Story Avenue. Yeah, around Belleville Cemetery, St. Mary's, that was referred to as Grasshopper Plains. It was just a, a nickname. That was... Was it the Empty Fields? Empty Fields, yeah, yep. Where was the Gypsy Lane located, and what famous artist built a home in that area? Laura Coombs Hills, and Gypsy Lane is now known as Hoyt's Lane. Down at the end of uh, Story Ave, almost to West Newbury, that last right. And that corner house, Laura Coombs Hills and her sister built that house uh, with proceeds from her paintings that she sold. What was the name of the hill where soldiers kept watch over the coastline for British ships? Marches, yeah, Lunt's Hill. Then it was known as Marches Hill, the tallest point in Newburyport, where the water tower is. Yeah, they were able to um, keep an eye on the coastline. Where is Back Bay located? Boston. <laughs> Boston, okay. There's one, locally. Back Bay, behind CVS. That Dalton, Hill Street, Cherry Street area where Highland, CVS on Pond Street. Yes, Dalton Street, Hill Street, Cherry Street, Brickshire Street. That's the known as the Back Bay. Where is Break a Day Hill? <laughs> Yes, up Merrimack Street as you go past, going up Merrimack Street past Burson, uh, Chase Shawmut, and that hill. That was Break a Day Hill, and there used to be Break a Day uh, Breakfast Cafe uh, place there. Okay? All right, did pretty good. Okay, photography and our documents. All the photography, thank you to Dr. Henry Perkins. He was one of the uh, second photographer in the United States, the first who took aerial photographs here in Newburyport in 1839. He had a medical practice on Essex Street. So this is why he was the beginning of we have thousands and thousands of photographs of Newburyport, Newbury, and West Newbury. And Scott Nason, a local collector and historian, told me several years ago that Newburyport has a better collection of photographs of our community than Boston does. So, and this is where the collections are, private and then library archives, historical society, and the custom house. All right, here we go. You recognize this? All right, right, Market Square. Uh, 18, fire of 1811, destroyed the entire downtown, and then within a week, the selectmen said, okay, any new buildings must be constructed of brick. And so most of these buildings you see today are from the 18-teens and the 1820s. And then here comes urban renewal. Where's that? Look at that, right there. Custom house, yeah, great shot. And today. And in the eight, uh, 1960s, we fast forward to urban renewal. We almost lost the downtown because of urban renewal. But fortunately, Mary Wilkins Hasslinger, I know some of you know Mary, she said to her daddy, she said, Daddy, you have to save the downtown. They're gonna bulldoze it down. Long story short, he did with a few folks uh, helping him, and they went to George Lala, Mayor George Lala, and uh, lobbied to save those buildings downtown because urban renewal was gonna bulldoze the whole downtown. And um, George Lala had papers on his desk that the city council passed in 1964 that if he signed those papers, the downtown would have been gone. So thank you to 
to Mayor Josh Lawler, thank you to Robert Wilkins and to others who helped save our downtown. Cashman Brothers, do you recognize, remember? Down on Water Street, yes, Water Street. And today. Ah, okay, you know where you are? All right, yes. Okay, this is a tough one. This is off of State Street. This is Middle Street. Look at this, Toll and Jones. Do you recognize those names? Anthony Toll, the silversmith, and William Jones, the silversmith. They worked together. They were trained by Moulton family. They are both buried in Oak Hill Cemetery. Over here on the right, uh, a room was rented by one of the last town criers in the United States, our Enoch Flanders. And today. Mm -hmm. Grog is down here, right? Okay, where are we? When you're looking at old photographs, look at the windows, look at the roof lines, the firewalls, and State Street. This is Threadneedle Alley on the left. And today. <coughs> this whole block would have been gone during urban renewal, saved. Again, another section here. Look at the roof line, the firewalls, the street here on the left, any guesses? Foot of Inn Street. You're looking at Market Square here in the foreground. Look at the trolley tracks here, right? And today. If urban renewal had happened, what would have happened? Those, all those big buildings we're seeing would have been bulldozed down and new buildings put up. New buildings, yeah, new businesses. Recognize? Market Square here. Water Street here, right? Liberty Street on the right. What a beautiful job they did restoring these buildings. Peavies. Right. So here's In Street on your right, Market Square, State Street on your left. All right, and today. Remember Brigham's ice cream? Anybody remember, huh? <laughs> yeah, Brigham's was right here. <laughs> yes, the firewalls. So up on the roof, See this? They put those firewalls in for protection. So if there was a fire over here on the right, for example, on the roof, then these firewalls would help protect and prevent the fire to jump over to the next building, the next roof. And they go all the way down to the ground? Mm, no, well, they, no, they're separate, and then you certainly have brick walls in between, yes, the buildings inside. All right, recognize here? In Street, we're looking towards Market Square, right? Take a look here, all right? Look at the buildings on the right. Remember when you, anybody remember driving down In Street? And here we go. Wow, huh? What a wonderful decision that they made, those folks, decision makers made to make it a pedestrian street. Wasn't that nice? Yeah. All right. Post office. <laughs> Recognize where we are? Designed by uh, Rufus Sargent, our local architect. And here on the right is Threadneedle Alley. Oh, and here we go. Restaurant. Remember the old Steak and Stein? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
trolley tracks. State Street here. And look, this was a house, one of the first houses built um, right here on the corner of the newly laid out Pleasant Street in 1801. And look what they did. Eventually, they added on to the bottom for businesses and today. This building here, this is the mercantile building. This is the old Dodge shoe factory. And the Dodge family was one of the leaders in the country producing ladies' shoes in the country in the late 1800s. Incredible. It's a little tough. Look at this. Look at all the soldiers here. This was known as the Grand Army Building. All right, State Street. Here we go. Arthur, right? Arthur Page Insurance. Next time, go by. Look, Grand Army Building. Okay. If you're driving, please do not look up. Okay. Don't do that. If you're a passenger, okay. This is a tough one. Tough one. Trolley tracks. What is this building here over on the right? Whitefield Church. This is, here we go, State Street. Here's Charter Street. The five cents was built in about 1927. All right, State Street. And next, the same white building. That's the Whitefield Church. Yes, there was a church on the corner of State and Prospect. And look at the house here. Right. That's the Institution for Savings Bank, but this is a house, not part of the bank. This is Temple Street. And the institution has purchased this house, and they're redoing it for offices. Have you seen the work? Yeah. And today. So the institution loan bank. And now this area where there was a house is the parking lot for institution. Which church is this? Pleasant Street, Unitarian. Yeah. Look at all the houses here on the left and on the right. Keep an eye on this building here. All right. And ready. This is kind of hold on to your seat. Right. There's parking, right? Right? There's parking. Yeah. So here's the parking lot, Prince Place parking lot. And over here. Telephone, yes, the telephone uh, uh, company uh, parking lot here. <coughs> Unitarian Church built there in 1801. And where was their first church located? Market Square, yeah, the third parish church in 1800. The congregation decided to say, hey, we need a new church. And they went up to the newly laid out Pleasant Street and was completed in 1801. Right. Kind of tough. Oh, we're now on Pleasant Street. Look at here. This is the library. Right. This building is still here on the right, the brick building. Recognize it? Here's Prince Place. Right. There's the old Dodge shoe building. That's now the mercantile building with condos, some businesses. And then we're looking towards State Street here and Temple Street. Ah, uh, the YM, beautiful building, YMCA, right? Remember that? Beautiful building. Corner of Harris and State. 
This building here, it's a library, the old Tracy Mansion. Yep, up here, the old Wolf Tavern sign. Museum of Old Newbury has that sign. And it burned in the 1980s. And they took it down. It remained um, an empty lot until the library, the addition in 2001 and two, the addition of the library. Wouldn't that have been beautiful if we still had the YM? And that would have been the addition for the library. Okay. Wolf Tavern, where was this located? Right. Yeah, and this is kind of, this is a buckle your seatbelt. Okay, hold on. Here we go. 1950s, it was taken down by the owner. Remember the gas station? Yeah, and today, parking lot. That was a beautiful, beautiful building. Absolutely gorgeous. And yes, the owner took it down. He was also the owner of the Brown Hotel on Brown Square. It was kind of a battle about liquor licenses. So he tore down the Wolf Tavern. Anything look familiar? What's this building here? City Hall, yes, City Hall. This is the old Phillips building. I knew Dottie Phillips years ago, and um, I'll get to the story. And then this building here, what is this? The f fire, yes, it's an engine house. And so to the far right is the Unitarian Church. There we go, a unicorn. And Dottie's uh, husband took, hooked down uh, the third floor, and she was angry for the rest of her life. She was very upset about that. Yeah. Okay, that's the other view. Engine house, Phillips building, Unitarian. What is this big brick building? Bartlett, Ma uh, Bartlett Mills that burned down, right in the in street area. Oregano's area on Pleasant Street. Yep. And today. So the engine house is gone, is third floor gone. Yep. This is a tough one. I, w I wouldn't have gotten this. Okay, here we go. Unicorn Street. Yeah, look at it again. It's Unicorn Street, yep, looking down. Many black families lived here, immigrant families here. Uh, the late John Legoulis lived on the street. Here's a hint, right here. Church steeple, who's church steeple? No, not federal. Here we go. Hold hands. <laughs> Green Street parking lot. Oh, let's go back. See, this was Unicorn Street that went all the way from Pleasant to Merrimack Street, and it was a neighborhood. And it was all torn down, most of it during urban renewal. Mm, this is a hard one. What's here over in the left? That's the river. And this is Green Street and Pleasant. There's the theater on the right. Came in about the 1920s. Very active theater. This is one of the earliest photographs in the United States taken by Dr. Henry Perkins, one of the first aerial views um, in Newbyport taken. And um, 
What church do you think this is? Yeah, the Congregational. Excellent. This is the Old North Church, Gothic-style architecture. He's probably standing in the Unitarian uh, church steeple. And this is Brown Square in the foreground. This burned in the 1860s, and they rebuilt within a year. The empty space back here, if it's 1839, what came in to Newburyport in 1840? The railroad, yes. So this is the railroad area here, which is now Clipper City Rail Trail, and that area also is Route 1 bypass, and today, or later in the 1860s. All right, and the Central Congregation Church, how did it get its name? It was the North Church, then the Whitefield Church in about 1910 on the corner of Prospect and State, and the Prospect Street slash Temple Street Church on the corner of Prospect and Fair. Those two congregations combined with the North Church congregation, and they changed the name to Central Congregation Church. All right, this is an easy one. What's this? City Hall, the new police station, about 1927. Look at this steeple. That's the old steeple of the Baptist Church which was taken down in 1940s. I was getting old, and so they replaced it to the current church, and today. Mm -hmm. See, see the new steeple here. Oak Grill, Mission Oak, yes, right there. And then back here, look at that, that's this IC. No, it was still a church until the, when did Baptist move to um, Hale Street? Uh, the 90s? Yeah, yeah. Here's another early, early, about 1840 by Dr. Henry Perkins. What's this body of water? The Frog Pond, yes, this is Bartlett Mall, right? And this is what? The jail on Auburn Street that was built in 1825, and Chuck and Jilly Griffin have uh, just uh, lovingly uh, restored the old jail, and today, right? There it is, the jail. Okay, what's in the foreground? The mall. What are we looking at here? The railroad station. Yeah, the old railroad, Pond Street Railroad Station. And there were passengers going up and then cargo to the 1950s. And then it was moved by the well-known Bossy Gillis over across the street to Dalton. And today, the CVS, Pond Street. This is a tough one, except if you can read sideways. <laughs> the Prospect Street Church, also known as the Temple Street Church. So if you go down Fruit Street, where the Museum of Old Newbury is at the corner of High and Fruit, you go down and you connect Prospect Street and then there's Fair, that parking lot and condo building is where the Prospect Street was located. Ah, yeah. And a famous gentleman abolitionist, Frederick Douglass spoke here. And he stayed with uh, the Plummer family on Federal Street. Yes, Red House going down Federal on the right. That's the Plummer House, abolitionist. Train, 
Where do you think we are? Underpass, High Street, yeah. If you haven't been on the rail trail, take a walk. And today, right? Again, towards the train station is High Street here. And the Mosley family lived here in this house. Yes, your back is to Washington Street. All right. This is a challenge. No, not Essex. Nope. We are on Washington Street. This is Summer Street that goes up to St. Paul's Church. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, the Route 1 bypass in the 1930s. There were over 100 homes taken down for the Route 1 bypass. Why did we have a bypass? Picture it down at the current rotary at Route 1, where Duncan's and Subway and so forth is. People were coming in from the south, and they were going up State Street and downtown through Market Square. There was so much traffic. There was constant jams, and there were police out there directing traffic. So what did they do? We need a Route 1 bypass to get the cars out of downtown and circumvent the downtown. So That's there we go. House. That's your house. Yeah. At, the top of the At the top of the bridge. Where, where are we, here? Oh, the back one, on the right. Here. Behind it. Oh, behind it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and today. It's hard to imagine all those homes there, but it's true. This is looking down Summer Street, and there's the train depot, right? And the river is over here in the bridge on the right. And today, All right? looking over Route 1 towards the townhouses and the Clipper City Rail Trail. Okay, here's a hint. What is this up here? Not the Greek. St. Paul's. Paul's, yes, this is High Street. There's the St. Paul's wall. There were houses right here. And today. Right, so there were houses there. It was completed in about 1934, the bypass. Now you're looking the other way. St. Paul's Wall on the right, Summer Street here. Look at these homes here. Winter Street over here on the left. And here we go. High Street. Note this house right here, okay? Oh, gas station. And here we go. Ah, there's Louis. Louis Pharmacy right here. Okay, what are we looking at? All right, we are at Merrimack Street at the foot of Kent Street. Note this brick building. Leary's, yes. And this sign up here says uh, 1870s Caldwell. Caldwell Rum, yes. Again, if you've never noticed it, if you are driving, do not look up. And today. Yeah, part of famous Caldwell's late 17, in the 1790s through the 1950s. 1790s. This is a house on the corner of Lime 
and purchase. Lime and purchase. So this is an example of many homes were little grocery stores. And today. Huh? Oh, look at this beautiful Victorian. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, now, I suggest everybody hold hands on this one. <laughs> Hold hands, here we go. Do you recognize where you are? You're standing on High Street at the top of Federal, looking across the street on the ridge. Let's go back again. This belonged to the Dodge family, the, of the uh, Dodge uh, Shoe Factory family. And they have three daughters. And uh, I will be writing about those daughters in my, I'm taking a break now, but Tiptoe Volume 2 will start at the end of next year. Uh, and so uh, I'll be writing about those three well-accomplished daughters. Yeah. What happened? So why the Mannix family, Mannix Senior, why probably there was a lot of repairs, maybe tax dollars, and so they chose to tear it down and build this one. This is a tough one. No, nope, not the toll building. We are Independence and Liberty Street down the south end. And here we go. This was a mill. Uh, went through two or three different names. It was a cotton mill. And here we go. The tannery, right? Liberty Street, Federal Street. You okay? Yeah, here we go. Good again. Oh, I was so excited. I was working on this last year, oh, years, uh, but volume two of Clipper Heritage Trail. And I'm looking at these photos, I'm thinking, where is it, where is it, where is it? So I kind of guessed where it was. I got into my truck, I drove down, and I looked at the old image, and I looked at this big chimney, and I thought, oh, I did it, I figured it out, I figured it out, I was jumping up and down, and here we are, the Yacht Club. Oh, right there. Let's go back. This was a city railroad that came in through the south end along Marches Hill, cut through Joppy, Long Water Street. Here it goes. It picks up here, curves around. That's Plum Island in the background, and it's coming right here. And today, of course, there's the Yacht Club, and I figured it out, that little chimney. And this was the uh, Perkins Kimball sawmill. And uh, Mr. Uh, Kimball uh, built my home that my grandparents uh, purchased back in the 1940s on Prospect Street. And today, right? If you have not been on the rail trail, the most beautiful spot right here, lots of benches to sit. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, where are we? We're kind of high. Where's a high spot? Marches Hill, yeah. This is Marches Hill, this is High Street. And the old railroad, city railroads coming through here and now it is the rail trail. And often when you're looking at old pitches, what gets in the way of today's pitches? Trees, telephone poles. So this is today. There's the house here. So many trees, right? And there's the Clipper City Rail Trail. All right, you know where you are? And anybody go sliding as a child? Anybody loco? Yeah, Marches Hill. And I remember up on top, uh, this was called Chinatown for, for my generation. And I was scared. I was really scared to go to Chinatown because it was too fast. Yeah. Yep, High Street, Newbury here. Yep, this house is gone, fire. 
Oh, this is a tough one. Yep. Hard to figure out. You are looking at the comb factory. We were leaders starting in the, uh, comb started in the 1600s in West Newbury. Eventually the Noyes family came to Newburyport, started out 1800s on State Street and then Water Street and then Chestnut Street. And there we are, Chestnut Street. Clipper City Rail Trail crosses right here. So we go back again. The Noyes family were leaders in the United States with the decorative combs. They invented the machinery instead of making them by hand. And it was just unbelievable. People all around the country would come and uh, talk with the Noyes family. Yeah, there was uh, what was made of um, cattle horns, uh, turtle shells. Yeah. Yes, there's interpretive panels. Yeah. Oh, anybody from Joppy? Huh? What's this in the background? Plum Island. I think that tip right there is a lighthouse. And this big rock. There used to be hundreds of children living in Joppy. Huh? You're on Water Street here and today. Yes, known as Goodwin's um, Landing, where the fishermen would come in up, up by the seawall is Janvin's Landing. There's also a fisherman's landing here. It was eventually nicknamed Simmons Beach because there was a counselor in Joppy who used to take uh, get truckloads of sand from Plum Island, bring it up and dump it on Goodwin's Landing, and it was eventually uh, nicknamed Simmons Beach, uh, and they put the sand down for the children. Yeah, just further, just past Goodwin's Landing was the clam shacks. Oh. Where is that big, big rock? Big rock, it's at the end of Water Street. So you're going past Marble Street. So you go past Marble. Yep. Then the next, then on the left, there's the last house. Yep. And you, you can see that rock right there with the penguins. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The penguins are yeah. served, Mike Updike's penguins are out there. Well, that big rock, that's where that rock is. Yeah. This is a close up of the rock. Yeah. Yeah. Fake penguins on the iceberg. This is the, supposedly the last clam shack that was certainly renovated, uh, and someone lives there. Where are we? Flat Iron Point. Flat Iron Point. Michael Bartlett, yes. Yes, this is Water Street. Look right here in the right corner, there's a trolley track. This is Union Street, and this is the old gas company here, the old McBurney house here, and today. Right? Got it? So this is National Gridland. Just talking, yep, National Gridland. Mm -hmm. You know this. Come on now. The library, Tracy Mansion. Yeah, this is Tracy Mansion on State Street. And the corner of Prince. Yeah, used to be very large backyard, orchards in back. And today. A Simpson Annex here in the 1870s was added on. Let's see, roof line. Yep. Well, the chimneys are, they cut the chimney. Yep, and there's one chimney there. Yep, same roof line. And awesome. thank you. <laughs> Questions about anything? Vernon Street, yes, off a of high in Auburn, and Auburn, yes. Street. 
Yeah. Uh, did anybody know Vernon Street? Was it known as Back Street? Did anybody, does that sound familiar to anyone? I don't know, but you can check in the library archives with old maps. Yeah, Sharon, the archivist, can help you. Yeah, yeah. Questions about anything? Yes, ma'am. This was fabulous. Oh, thank you. It's fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. This is one of my favorite slideshows. Yeah. Yes. Pictures of the old Polish American club. They prob and that was down on purchase. Uh, Water Street. Yeah. Um, the archives, that's the best place to check. Yeah. The library archives. Yes, sir. The Memorial Hospital. Anybody recognize that? The Wisdom Memorial Hospital. Picture High Street. Rawson Ave going up to the emergency room. On the right is Rawson Hill Road. That's where the Wisdom Memorial Hospital was, started by, also known as the Homeopathic Hospital, started by Dr. George uh, Wister, and, um, and eventually um, merged with Anna Jakes in about the 1940s, or I think it was the 40s. Yeah, there is one picture available uh, of the Memorial Hospital. Uh, yes, actually, uh, that photo is in um, volume, I'm getting my books mixed up, <laughs> volume two. Yes, I write about it in Clipper Harris Trail, volume two. Yes. Yes, ma'am. What happened to the old UU Church building, and are there any photographs or pictures that you can show us that you can Oh, there are, uh, down in uh, Market Square? Yeah. Yes, there's drawings of... Uh, there is a drawing of the third parish meeting house. Uh, yes, that is. And um, what to that they, they took it down. It was old, dilapidated. Yeah, and they took it down in 1800 and built the new Unitarian up on uh, Pleasant Street. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Oak Hill Cemetery was established in 1842. Edward Mosley of the Mosley family uh, and fellow citizens uh, decided that Newburyport needed a new cemetery and they modeled the cemetery after uh, Mount Auburn in Watertown. And um, so it's one of the first rural garden cemeteries in the country. And it has um, what makes it different than the old hill burying ground of 1729, has the roads and the pathways and the plantings. Uh, we have over 30 acres um, and hundreds of trees, some of the oldest and largest trees uh, in Newburyport. Why does it say have Tappan's name when you uh, the Tappan's name on the entrance gates, um, the gate, the main gate off of Brown and State Street was donated by John Tappan. He was a Newburyport boy, but moved to New York um, and for business there. And there was uh, a Tappan family in New York, uh, just an aside, that uh, bailed out William Lloyd Garrison when he was in jail in Baltimore. Uh, Maryland, and I've got to research that, but uh, it's probably connected the Tappan, Newbyport Tappan's family. So he donated the monies to build that in 1863, and John Tappan and his family are buried in Oak Hill. There's a Tappan, uh, the brick house at the top of Kent Street. Uh, there's an unusual brick house that I think it says Tappan on it. It's 18, uh, the brick, bricks. Uh, brick house on the top of Kent Street. Uh, I'm not familiar if Tappan live, uh, Tappan family, but definitely um, William Ashby, one of our known abolitionists, uh, lived in that home. And at, uh, yes, in the brick at the top of Kent and High. Um, and uh, Mr. Ashby and his family is buried in Oak Hill Cemetery. So thank you very much for your attention. Appreciate it very much.